Well guys, I decided to go ahead and order a brand new water temp gauge. And it arrived yesterday. It looks awesome. And as you can see, it's an AC Delco. So here's the part number if you're interested. I ordered this uh, from Zips Corvette parts yes and um, I'm getting ready to uh, start taking the console apart so I can get to the uh, center cluster uh, and uh, and take that off and um, get this bad boy installed so let's get started Okay, so I have the instrument cluster on the bench. I was showing you those wing nuts, and these are the two studs at the very bottom of the, of the cluster. This is where the radio goes. And these are the ones that um, secure the front of the console to the, to the cluster itself. And as I was telling you, yeah, you're gonna end up with little cuts here and there. So, par for the course. So next, what I have to do is remove these, I think there's four of them. Yeah, these quarter inch, I think they are. Tiny little screws that secure the the back of the cluster to the assembly and let's see we need some yeah, these are quarter inch as you can see it can get pretty involved but it's it looks really worse than it really is, and you know, once you once you get familiar with these things, you know, it ain't that bad. I think I have to. Yeah, I have to disconnect the the clock because we have this little thing here. For that, you need a tiny screwdriver. And then you don't want to lose that little screw um, that goes inside this little knob. I believe now we can remove the gauges. The time to dust these things off, clean the lens. And um, my clock, I, I've had it uh, apart a couple of times. It just will not work. These are electric, but also mechanical. It's a combination of both. And um, mine is just toast. So, water temp. here and uh, to get to it I'm gonna have to undo these these 5 16s or 3 8 let's see what we have here 5 16s and let me tell you all I hope that this is the uh, the reason why it is 
overheating a little bit. Like I said, it's it's gotten better since I've replaced so many things, but I um, going to this extent is um, it's an extreme kind of thing, but necessary. I want to see this thing through. I want to make sure that. Um, that I address every possible issue. By the way, and I read this on the on the website uh, zips. I think it was um, when I placed the order. You see this little. I don't even know what the technical name is. It's like a resistor, I guess. And supposedly these things. I'll focus on it probably not but anyway um, the new gauge is of course not only new but it's modern so you can reinstall this I'm gonna leave it out because they say that if there are any issues with the um, how the gauge reads or blah 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 that you may want to leave that out so I'm just gonna start by leaving it out so anyway I've removed the water temp the old one and let me compare this and of course here's a new one just gotta be careful with it Same thing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start cleaning a few things and then start the installation. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm prepping this new gauge. I am removing the, the two nuts that hold this you know, like a porcelain thing and there are tiny little washers here there they are this is supposed to okay and of course so right here just like that I'll make sure I don't install it upside down I would never do that right Important, of course, if you let's make sure this one is not going to work like that. So, let's see if I can use it this way. Nope. <clears throat> and the only reason I'm not talking to myself here is. These are the um, terminals for the for the plug that you know that powers up the uh, the gauge, but they have little tabs, which is no big deal. I can bend them, <laughs> but if I was to use the the old. I think this is either plastic or ceramic. Maybe just a piece of plastic. Yeah. I was trying to sound fancy, I guess. See, these have a, a different kind of cutout. 
and that allows me to line up the end this terminal correctly so let's try it that way and uh, we'll see how that goes And it's not a, a big deal, but I think it makes life a little easier. One less, less thing to worry about, right? So that's one, then the, the gauges have not held in there now. assembly so that's a ground My hands are kind of in the way, and uh, I keep checking the, the phone to make sure that I'm in the frame. Okay, so that's, and I have these kind of marks, so when I connect the, the plugs, I know that this one is a pink wire, this is the black. These I have a tan and a whatever, <laughs> another pink, I think. It helps just make your life a little easier. Well, you know what? I just realized this one had an insulator here. So let's backtrack a little bit and uh, I'm gonna go through the trouble of doing all of this. Might as well just it right now it's just like they they had it which is probably nothing because this thing also has a little tab you cannot probably see it it's a tiny little tab and there's a uh, kind of like a locator hole and that would ground it anyway but just to make sure everything is like it's supposed to be. Actually, is that um, I call it an insulator? It actually acts as a, as a washer, and it, and it allows this. Ouch! Ouch! That hurt. It allows this um, damn this terminal to be at the same height as the others. Okay. We have one more here. Well, before I do that, how about if I actually install the, <laughs> the terminal? Otherwise, I don't know why this thing is not working. I'm gonna be wondering, right? Short break here to, to get 
took a, a few minutes um, off because I um, I was looking at this, you know, before I, I started installing this terminal. And I decided I'm gonna take that, um, I put it back here actually, this little, um, it's not plastic, what is the name of, of that material? I can't think of it now. Um, anyway, that actually was putting this ground terminal up too high. And I thought, well, if it's gonna be a ground, why keep it off of the, of the base, which is the body of the assembly, which is the ground. I mean, it didn't make sense. So I, yeah, like, I guess I like to do things a few times over, you know, just redo them. So usually two times, but as they say, third time is the charm, right? So we're gonna call that one done now. And just this last connector thing here. Gotta tighten it and uh, Phenolic, I think they're called, that material. I knew I was gonna think of it, yeah. I think it, that's what, what those are, are called. Yes, maybe I had something to do with this resistor thing, which I hope they're right, that, um, that you don't really need them. So, um, Install this one down here. That is the last one. Okie dokie. Does it look right to you? I hope that's not a bad omen. <laughs> I joke about it now, but if it doesn't work, you're gonna hear me cry. And it ain't pretty when I do that. So, I wanted to also check this thing. This is a little bit loose, so I don't know why that is. I don't like to spray anything on these unless it's absolutely necessary. They, um, they can be kind of delicate, so I just try to just throw some air through there and, uh, and that should be plenty. Mostly dust. There's nothing, nothing major. So, and I replaced the the lens five or six years ago. So I just in fine shape.
So, let's see if I can find this new tripod I, I got, this tiny little one. But I think it's working really well for the, uh, to do better close-ups. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, I know my hands or arm gets in the way, but uh, nothing I can do about that. This is pretty good. So, carefully, the, the first thing to do is to insert the, um, the shaft for adjusting the, the clock. making sure everything is lined up properly. And again, I left the uh, resistor out of the picture. I hope I don't have to take this thing apart again. But uh, again, they were very not adamant about it, but they were like, man, that, that is not necessary when you have the, the newer the newer um, gauge. I don't know, it's, I'm sure the electronics inside there are a little different. And these tiny little you just want to snug them up a little bit. You don't want to go bananas tightening things. So, that is it. And last thing to do here is to install the lock um, this little knob and again I just want to show you that is the little screw that secures the knob to the to the clock shaft Make sure you don't lose any of these little parts. So anyway, let me finish this up and I'll, I'll be back in a few. All right, so it's all back together. And I guess you can say that it's overheating. Uh, <laughs> I'll see what happens once everything is connected. So let's hope that is that's not going to be the case. Let's try to reinstall some of these things. See how it goes. I'm still 
Pull this one first. Door ajar. So the door ajar goes up here. Headlamps, I'm not using that, um, that bulb. Okay. Actually, that one also has a resistor, so maybe all the things need to be replaced. Not today, though. the seat belts yep. the clock I'm not even worrying about connecting that one because there's no need for that. It doesn't work. So no need to have it plugged for the heck of it. By the way, not that it matters, I only used LEDs for the instrumentation lights. I don't feel like wasting those for the door ajar kind of thing and seat belts. Those are just regular conventional bulbs. Okay. 